You ever wonder if getting a master's degree is hard or worth it? In this video, I'll be summarizing basically my entire journey through graduate school. So if you don't know me already, I graduated with a bachelor's in chemistry and later switched onto a master's in environmental engineering. The switch was difficult because chemistry is really science heavy and I didn't have the necessary engineering experience going to graduate school. But I still made it, I still graduated. Of course, me telling the story, this is based off of my own experience. So be cautious if you follow the same route or coming with a similar background. My experience will be different from yours. So with that out of the way, I'm going to open up my graduate school transcript, give you a timeline of the classes that I took to graduate as an environmental engineer, and my overall thoughts on these classes and the events that took place while I was taking these classes. So I went to UC Irvine for my graduate school. We had two routes we can go to. The first one was to take the master's thesis, meaning you would stay for two years and you would work with a professor and they would just basically give you a project and you would graduate after you complete your thesis. Or number two, you would just take the class route, meaning all you had to do was fulfill these requirements, fulfill a certain amount of units to take. You know, once you pass with like 45 units, then you could just basically graduate. So I think if I remember correctly, if you wanted to take the master's thesis route, you only had to pass 36 units worth of classes and the rest would be you working on your project and you know collaborating with your professor or you can graduate once you pass 45 units worth of classes. So I took the class route. That to me was the most logical solution because I didn't want to spend two years and so throughout my whole description of my transcript you're only going to see classes. I didn't graduate with a thesis, I just took all these classes and graduated as fast as I could and I was able to graduate in one and a half years. I only took four quarters. Four quarters is equivalent to 1.5 years or maybe like three semesters. So that's just a heads up with my university and my program. Yours could be different. Be sure that you research what your program and your university makes you do to graduate. Not all programs will even have just a class route. Sometimes they will make you, I guess you only have one route, which is the thesis route. So the first class I took was Applied Engineering Math this is when I was first got introduced into things like heat transfer and differential equations. I thought for my chemistry back in undergrad, all I had to do was take up to like multivariable calculus. Engineering goes beyond that. Thank goodness though, I only had to take one class of this, but it was to me the hardest class in my graduate school. And that class sort of required me to take MATLAB, which I never even knew about. So if you're new coming into this field and you're switching from like a science major to an engineering major like me, or even like a social science major to an engineering major, you might have a very difficult time adjusting to the whole math concepts. In this class, I went to office hours every single week and I talked to my classmates, we formed groups. Basically, this was the most proactive I had to be for this class. I had to work really hard, go on Google, go on YouTube, basically relearn all the math that maybe undergrads already knew. The next class for fall quarter 2016 was environmental chemistry. This was like the easiest class out of my whole grad school. So it sort of balanced out from the highly stressful math class to now taking this class in the afternoon where I can sort of relax a bit. It was about water chemistry and also this teacher, I guess he was sort of busy teaching another class. So he had more priority teaching and worrying about that class. So he didn't give us much homework. He didn't give us that much thought, to be honest. In the end, so long as he showed up in class and did like the bare minimum of homework that he gave, then you would just get an A. The next class on the list for fall quarter of 2016 was flow of unsaturated porous media. Basically, it's like groundwater. We calculate things like the water pressure head and so on. This was completely new to me because I didn't know that much about physics and like how that relates to the environment. This class, actually, I failed. Well, I got a B minus. But in graduate school term, anything below a B, so a B minus or below, is considered failing. So I got a B minus in this class and that is considered failing. This class wasn't so hard on the homework, but I guess just the concept of it was confusing to me, so I ended up failing. And lastly, I had a seminar for environmental engineering. For the whole first year, we were required to take a seminar. It was just one unit. All you had to do was attend the seminar, write your name saying that you attended for that day, and then just listen to whoever was lecturing. They're mostly just PhD students or professors presenting their work. And again, all you had to do was listen, so you would just basically get points or you know, get units for showing up. Nothing hard at all. So to wrap up the first quarter of my graduate school, it was the hardest because of the math class and I guess the most depressing because I failed that one groundwater class. In the end, again, all I had to do was graduate with 45 units. So that means because I failed one class, that four units didn't count as a class. That didn't count as units. So now that just means that I have to take on another four units later on in the future, somehow, somewhere in my next quarter. 
Ideally, I wanted to graduate in four quarters. So that means I don't want to take three classes. Three classes would count as 12 units, so 12 times four is 48. That means I would sort of overdo it by graduating with 48 units rather than 45 units. Or I could just somehow take a total of 11 classes, which counts as 44 units, and just have like one unit of something random. Again, all they cared about was the fact that you graduated with 45 units worth of classes in their like checklist. All right, moving on to winter quarter of 2017. These are the dates of between January 2017 to I think March or April 2017. One quarter is worth 10 weeks in California terms. For the first class, advanced biology treatment process. This class was also pretty chill and pretty easy just because the professor made it very chill and very easy. So these classes are highly dependent on who is teaching. If they want to make your life miserable, then they can. They can make it harder than it should be. But this professor was pretty old. She was near retirement. If not, she was already retired. She's very easy, nice, and friendly. She's basically like your grandma that you'd see at Christmas. So she was just very friendly to begin with. Also, I guess how she lectured was hard to understand for almost all the students because again, she's pretty old, but she's very friendly. So no one really understood what she was talking about. And she knew that, so she just made grading our tests much easier. In this class, you'd learn about the wastewater treatment cycle. So things like what is activated sludge and how does that work biologically speaking. So this is where the chemistry began to kick in. You had a book to read, but I mean, no one really read it. And she would just teach like the basic concepts. It wasn't really hard math. It wasn't really hard biology or anything. Yeah, there were some equations, but she made it open book. So the difficulty of classes will really all depend on your professor. The next class is physical chemistry treatment process. And so this class really intertwined with the previous class, the advanced biology treatment process. Now you're learning about the physical chemistry, like the physics of the wastewater treatment. So you're learning things about like the settlement time and you have much more advanced physical equations to deal with. Our teacher was actually a PhD student who was working very heavily with the professor. The professor was just like on sabbatical leave, so he didn't have time to teach. The PhD student was hard and tough, but he taught really well. And you know, I would go to office hours every time. So I ended up with a B plus in this class. Usually if I get a B in a class, that means I worked really hard and I went to office hours and it was difficult. If I get an A in a class, that just meant that maybe the professor was really easy and chill or I just really, really understood the concept that I didn't have to put in too much effort to study for it. I know I'm like that one student who doesn't really have to put in that much effort and they get an A in a class. Yeah, I'm one of those students. The next class was a fuel cell fundamentals class. So this class was with a lot of undergraduate students. This class was an elective, it was not a requirement because I focused so much on like wastewater. This class was just a fun class for me. I was just really interested in like how fuel cells work and you know, just the technology behind it. A lot of my classmates did not take this class so it was just really me and a lot of undergrad students who took this class. But I'm very interested in future technology. I learned a lot about this class. I would highly recommend it because the professor was very outgoing but he was difficult because this is very engineering focused. I had a difficult time and I had to work really hard just to get my B plus. Remember that a B minus is failing in graduate school. So if I get a B, that means that I am on the brink of failing. So a B plus is pretty scary. And lastly, again, the seminar class. Now onto spring quarter 2017. This is the months between like May 2017 up until summer of maybe June 2017. The first class is a desalination class. So again, I was very focused and chose to deal with wastewater that I took this desalination class. We were able to like connect the pieces between you know advanced biology treatment and physical chemistry treatment, the previous classes, into desalination. Everything just connected together once you you know take them all at once. Very interesting class, a lot of concepts and theories and like what if questions that were brought into this class. Very fun professor too because she was very outgoing and she worked with us and you know really engaged us. I think for like the final of this class, we had to heavily read a research paper that we picked ourselves and then we just had to present and like critically think what was this paper talking about. And you had your own inputs and ideas and interpretation of the paper. So if you're a science nerd, you'd love this class. Next is carbon footprint analysis. This class was also taught by the same teacher who taught the physical chemistry treatment process. So in the physical chemistry treatment process class, I got a B plus. Again, very hard, very difficult, very tough, but I enjoyed it. Now I came back with another class and this class was much easier because this is the first time he taught the class. So I guess just to make things easier for us, he wanted to test the waters on how he'd be teaching his class. We gave him some constructive criticism, but overall we got an A+. It wasn't too difficult. So long as you took the other classes, then you were well prepared for this class. Lastly was GIS for civil engineers. 
This class was an introductory class for GIS. This is the most useful class I took out of every class that I took in graduate school because I was very new to engineering. This class just taught like the basics of GIS. So if you are very, very new, they will handhold you all the way through. They give you a book and basically, you know, go line by line, step one, open the browser, open the program, click the save button. Like it was very, very basic, very simple, very easy to go through and follow along. And as you progress more throughout the book, you would learn more about the program. You're not gonna be an expert in it, but you at least know what every button does on that program. And for the rest of the spring quarter, this is where I sort of cheated my way knowing that I had to graduate with four units. So I tried to squeeze out everything, every class that I could to get four units. So I had a climate action, not a class, but like a program where you know, a professor would talk, some other third person you know, representative would talk about climate action or climate change. We would just listen in and I just got units for listening in. It did take some extra time because I had to go out of my way to attend these lectures, but two units is two units. All I needed to graduate were units, so give me everything, not do too much work, and you know, I'm happy with that. Another mandatory one unit seminar, so again, easy units. And lastly, because I wanted to get more units, I was just talking to my friends, are you doing a master's thesis? Two of them were, and it turns out that if I helped them with their project, I would get units. And it's a double win because not only did I get units to graduate, I can also write that down as part of my resume and say that I helped with this research project. I contributed. So my name did get published as part of that paper. And somehow during this quarter, it was very hectic because I was also a TA for the ecology department. I know it's still random because you know I graduated with a bachelor's in chemistry, I'm majoring in engineering, but now I'm teaching for like biology slash ecology. I really enjoyed it though because I love working with students. It's just hard because I don't know anything about biology. So if you're watching this and you're my student before, hi. You probably couldn't tell, but I didn't really know the subject that well. But because I do my due diligence, I read the book with you, I watched YouTube videos, I learned everything I could just to make sure that I understood it well enough before you found out. And also the TA position helped pay for my tuition, so everyone wins. So to summarize my spring quarter of 2017, fun, hectic, but productive. Because I was able to take four classes instead of three, basically made up for that one failed class, so I'm still on schedule to graduate. And so with the spring quarter ending, now we're heading to summer where most students are just off. They're taking summer school or they're just, you know, enjoying summer. But I didn't enjoy summer. Now I'm a TA for chemistry labs. Because I was able to TA during my spring quarter, I got sort of referred to or reached out to a chemistry department who was lacking some TAs and they chose me. So that was basically my summer job. I got money from doing the CA position and I loved it way more than I did with the biology department because you know chemistry was just more of my interest and I had more background in that and this really opened up my eyes towards like teaching. I know I'm not a teacher right now but I sort of if I could transition to a different position I'd be a teacher. Now let's go into my last quarter. Fall quarter 2017. So September 2017 to December 2017 this is technically my last quarter. If I did my math right and I'm able to pass all my classes, then I'm able to get 45 units or more. So that technically means that I can graduate with, you know, this degree. First class was hydrology. So this class is an actual hydrology class taught by a very well-known, almost famous professor. Had high expectations and they were all met. I ended up getting an A in this class. It wasn't because, you know, like the professor was easy. It was very difficult. It applied lots of engineering concepts at that point because I had one year's worth of I guess engineering experience or engineering like concepts and education then I was able to apply all that into hydrology. So this quarter and this class was sort of my favorite. The next class I took was environmental toxicology. This is an elective class. None of my classmates at all took it. There's only like four students so it is very small. Very personal in terms of like how easy it is to talk to the professor. This is just an interesting class that caught my eye because toxicology is like going towards the medical route. It wasn't too difficult, I'd say, because I'm very interested in chemistry and how it relates to the body. I'm not good at biology, but how chemicals affect the body is sort of a cooler concept for me to understand. We just learned how like drugs and plastics and how maybe pesticides would work and affect the human body, how it translates to what diseases and the outcome of it. So very interesting class. I sort of overkilled it with the units because I didn't need to take an extra class, but I sort of wanted to take this class just because again, it was interesting. This was just in case I did fail hydrology. So I wanted to have extra, extra cushion in case I wouldn't make it. 
If I didn't pass hydrology, at least I'd pass this class. And the last two classes or units were a continuation of that climate action seminar from last quarter. It is now communication skills, which again, I don't know what they meant by that, but two units. Units are units, so I might as well just take advantage of that. Again, just attending some seminars. And again, continuing the research project from the other classmate. So I'm helping them with their master's thesis, just collecting data, and I got units for that. So the good thing about taking this climate action and like helping my classmate with collecting data for their thesis was that I got, in total, eight units. So that just meant that I didn't have to take two classes. This is like a guaranteed pass. So thank goodness I didn't have to take more classes. Also during this fall quarter, I was interning at this research lab for cancer cells. So that was also why I didn't take too many classes because I didn't want to work so hard and like maybe kill my brain during classes or during this internship that I'd be so tired to work or study. So this quarter was the easiest in terms of workload. So to summarize everything, the first quarter was the hardest and the last quarter was the easiest because coming in you don't know anything and then after gaining some experience and education throughout the year, when you graduate, because you went so hard on the first quarter and like the first few quarters, then life should be easier as you get out of it. And I was able to graduate with a 3.6 GPA passing 54 units. So I went above my 45 units requirement. So that was my experience with graduate school. If you're coming in from a science heavy background like chemistry or biology and you want to switch into engineering, take it from my experience, you can do it, but it's not going to be easy. Also understand that my experience will be different from yours. I might have been easier because my professors were old and retired or just didn't care too much. I was able to cheat my way towards like graduating with the required units by not having to take so many classes and just taking like seminars. You might not have that option. So again, take my experience with a grain of salt and do your due diligence on like researching the program and the university and what they require. So that's all I have for the video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.